name of Jesus. Amen. I do believe he's calling some other folks this morning. And right now would be a good time to you respond to the voice of the Holy Spirit as he says, come on, you know who I'm talking to today. You need to get on up because you need something from the Lord today. And right now is that time. As the Bible said, the waters are troubled and it's time to make a move. Amen. 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 So whatever it is in your heart today, don't let this world hold you back. Don't let somebody say, but, you know, I don't think it's really all that today. Don't let anything drown out the voice of that small, still voice that's crying out to you today that you need to come and make things right with God. Amen. Amen. There's a whole lot of talk these days. I don't know about y'all, but I've been hearing stuff on the news about a wall. Anybody been hearing anything about that? That's kind of a little ruckus, I guess, has been stirred up about some stuff over that. And, and I begin to think about that, and somebody said, well, what's the deal with all that going on anyway? Well, I think we need that wall. I got no problem with that. And somebody said, you know something? We need to take a closer look at it and see what's going on. Well, you know what? All I know to do is to take a biblical stand on all the issues that come up. And if you go back and look, there's a book of, of, of Nehemiah that's just about a wall the whole way through it. Amen? It's about building a wall so that the enemy can't come in and making sure that we keep them out and make sure we keep them at bay. And if you don't think that's enough, we'll go all the way down to the end of the book and you'll find at the end of the book in the chapter of Revelation chapter 21 that there's a place called heaven. And you know what? It's got a wall built around it. Amen. And it's not just a wall. Amen. It's not just a wall, it is the wall. And if you go take a look and see what that wall's made of and how it's built, I guarantee you that according to our standards today, it'll cost you more than $5.7 to build that wall. Amen. Amen. A whole lot more. Matter of fact, that wouldn't even take care of one jasper wall of one pearl gate, I do believe. But what I do know is this, that if you also go back and look at the book of Psalms, you'll find out that somebody named that the hedge of protection around the child of God. If there's anybody that needs a wall today, it's the child of God. It's the one who's seeking out for God. It's for those who are seeking for God's love, for God's divine protection. And if we're going to have it, we're going to have to have a wall built around us, folks. He said he keeps his angels in and kept around about those who love him so that we can be able to be kept from the things of the world. He keeps his angels around us so that we can know that the love of God is real and that the wiles of the devil are also real. But God says, I'll keep you from the world if you give yourself to me. Amen. Is there anybody today that's willing to give yourself to Jesus? Do you want God to have control of your life? The Holy Ghost is here to lead us and to guide us. Jesus said in John 14, chapter 26, that I'm leaving the comforter. He's coming back after I go, and he will lead you. He will guide you. He will teach you everything that I ever gave. So today, if we're going to have the remembrance and the things of God, we've got to do it through the Holy Spirit of God. And when we do, he builds a hedge of protection around each one of us. I don't know about you, but I need that hedge of protection. Because there's so much going on in the world today. I mean, we don't have to look any farther than what's taking place this week. There's already been a cry about women's health for all these years. And what it's cost us is almost 60 million lives of babies. And we do it with a, using some other kind of protection. Say we want to protect the women's health. And now it's okay for a man to marry a man or a woman to marry a man because we can do that under the law and they now have protection. But they're still out of the will of God and it's not according to the word of God. And by his standards it's still sin. Matter of fact, it's an abomination. So there's no way we can justify what God says is wrong. And now just even this week, they want to say that it's okay that even after the baby is born that we can still take its life and justify it. No, sir. God has a hedge of protection built around those. You may take that baby's life, but I'm telling you right now, God has it preserved. God has it taken care of. And God will make sure that that baby is protected, whether here or in the arms of Jesus, it will be taken care of. And then on the day of judgment, you're going to stand and give account to God for why it wasn't protected here. Amen. This world has gotten so crazy that you and I have got to realize and understand today that the only way that we're going to be kept safe from the things of this world is if we are protected by the Word of God. The Word of God that's in our mind. The Word of God that's in our heart. The angels that He has around about us that are kept in a place to keep us safe from the things of this world. And until we get right with God and understand that God is going to use us in this last day, 
Somebody said, I don't know if I like that or not. Too bad. <laughs> Jesus said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of folks these days that have gotten to the point, to the place, to where it's just no big deal. We don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's going to be all right because the will of God is going to be done anyway. Oh, really? How do you figure that? Because what I read in God's Word and what I see out of it, there's only one way in this life that God's will is actually going to be done. And that's if His people carry it out. Amen. You, and you say, well, I don't, I don't really agree with that. Really? Do you have any kids? Do you have a certain will for them to do? You know, you have a wish list of things that you'd like to see them do. Are they doing that today? If your kids are like mine, you, you probably wish you'd have beat them a little bit more when they were younger. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. That won't win any political points, I know. But the Bible still says if you spoil the child because you don't give them the rod. If, if you take it, you know, give them a good whooping that they need it. Don't, don't just beat them because, you don't, because that's how you are. But make sure it's a rod of correction. Make sure it's something to make them a whole lot wiser than they are now. And to realize that sin will pay a price. So it's a whole lot easier to go ahead and pay that price now with a rod to the backside or a belt or a switch. or you know, Some of y'all got to remember back them days. Amen. Come on now. My grandma was the one that always said, go cut your switch and bring it here. So, so I'd always get me the littlest one I could find. And somehow or another, she made it work anyway. Uh-huh. You know, but it all comes down to this. There are folks today that say, you know, it's going to be all right because I don't have to stand up. I don't have to take notice because God's going to take care of it. God's got it all. And you know what? In the end, he sure enough does. But if you don't stand up for what the Word says and you don't stand up for what's right today, God's going to look at you on these days and say, what's wrong with you? I'm convinced in my mind by reading the God's Word that there's a whole lot of folks that thinks they're going to heaven and they ain't got a clue. Hey, the Bible does say there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end of there is, is destruction. In other words, it's hell. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go there. And trying to make it on my own, it's not going to get it. Because I think it's right or it feels right or it looks right, doesn't necessarily make it right. If it doesn't measure up with God's Word, then you better stay away from it. And if you don't measure up with God's word, then you better climb in a little closer because you need him more than you realize. This world has become so blinded by the things of the devil. The problem with all that is the church is not far behind them in a lot of cases. It's become so easy for us to just say, well, you know, we're going to pray for them. And that's good. You need to pray for them. But there comes a point sometime, Christians, that we have got to take a stand. A physical stand, a verbal stand. Just saying it won't get it done anymore. Because there's coming a time. You think it's rough right now? Say, so, well, you know, it's just too hard. People make fun of you. People laugh at you. People, you know, they, 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 don't want to, they don't want to hear the name of Jesus. You're absolutely right. They don't. And there's more legislation on our congressman's desk all over this nation today that's getting ready to make the whole Bible illegal than we even know about. And if we don't take a stand as Christians today, then we will pay the price here and when we stand before God. It's not popular preaching, I know. It's not proper to say that anymore. Because we all want to be politically correct. You know, we don't want to offend anybody. I still say that we have become so hard on not being offensive to anybody that we have become the greatest offense to God. We've offended God in his word because we don't want to take a stand anymore. We've offended God because we don't want to stand up and let this world laugh at us anymore. And Jesus said, the world hated me, they're going to hate you. If the world loves you, that's a pretty good indicator something's wrong in your spiritual walk with God. If you're getting along with everybody that's in the world, there's something wrong with your relationship with Jesus Christ. If people don't hate you because you love Jesus, something is wrong. 
The word of God never said that a Christian would walk through this life with both pockets full of money, all the bills paid all the time, and everything taken care of. He did say, and you will remember the words of Paul, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed out begging for bread. But that don't mean there's going to be sometimes it's going to be kind of tough to find two nickels to rub together. That doesn't mean sometimes you're going to be having a hard time trying to find something that you like to. You may have to eat what you've got and not necessarily what you like. Hey, if it didn't, y'all wouldn't be feeding 3,000 people out of this food bank. Yeah. Amen. Y'all yeah. know this as well as I'm preaching today. As, as the word has come out, you understand, you get it, you know that. But why is it that we can't convey that message to the world that's lost and dying without Jesus Christ? Because the church can't even get that message today. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Don't be ashamed of what you have. But know this. Little is much when it's in the hands of an almighty God. God will take it and use it for what nobody else can imagine. That's what he did with the little boy's two-piece Long John Silver's meal, amen. Fed like 15,000 folks with that. A little bit later did it again with, with, with just not much more than that and still fed 4,000. That's what it was when Jesus walked by the, 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 the casket when the boy was being taken to, stuck in the ground to be buried. And the mama said, he's my only boy. And Jesus said, I'll take care of that. Whenever the man came to the Lord, he said, my daughter lays dying. I don't know what I'm going to do. Somehow or another, i got to have some help about this. Lord, you're the only one that can do anything about it. And when Jesus got there, you remember what happened? They said she'd already passed away. She was gone. And Jesus says, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. And the Bible says, they laughed him to scorn. I mean, they got such a big hee-haw out of that. Thinking, what kind of knucklehead is this? Who does Jesus think he is? Probably somebody in the line, maybe a Barney Fife in the line somewhere said, he's a nut. If you watch Andy Griffith, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he's a nut. A church that is on fire for God today in the eyes of the world is a nut. Get used to it. Matter of fact, just latch on to it. Go ahead and like it. Because if the world thinks that of you, then what must God think of you? And he's the only one that really matters, amen? He's the only one that really matters. Whatever is going on in your life today, whatever it takes, we've got to get to Jesus. And there is nothing that can stop us from it once we've got a made-up mind. Once we have a made-up mind, the world cannot stop us. But folks, look around at what's going on. There's too much out there. That will draw your attention away from Jesus. There's too much that will take your attention away from the word of God. As God would have it to be implanted in your heart. Just like it was the day that the devil talked to Eve. And he tricked her into partaking of the forbidden fruit. He didn't say, you know, the word of God says this. And so he just put his own little twist on it. He said, did not God say? Just enough to make her doubt. Just enough to make her wander. And he's still doing the same thing today. There are folks that would say that this is just a book of good stories. If you want to pass it in time with reading some good stuff, it's probably a good one to pass some time with. And there are folks that would say, well, I believe that the parts of the Bible is probably true, but I'm not really sure about some of that other stuff that's in there. And they pass it off as no big deal. Just like we do in taking the life of a little innocent unborn baby. Just like we do whenever we say, well, you know, maybe he didn't mean quite that way. Or got this list of sins in the word of God, but my name's not beside it, so it must be okay for me. But from Genesis 1 to Revelation 21, every single word is God-breathed. Every single word is God's absolute truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John 14, 6, no man comes to the Father but by me. It's still true. And it will be forever true. When he looks at you, child of God, in his word, and he says, be ye holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. That's not a suggestion. Matter of fact, when he gave us his word and said, let your light so shine, 
That wasn't a suggestion either. It was the commandment that we are to let this world know who we are in Christ Jesus. To let this world know that there is a God in heaven. Matter of fact, Jesus talked again in another place. He said, you're the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its savor, if the salt's not salty, it's no good. The only thing it's fit for is to be trampled under the feet of men. I hate to think that the church of the living God would come to that, wouldn't you? Today, we have been given authority by God's word to take the things in our city, in our community, in our homes, in our schools, take them by the authority and the power, the word of God. And let's stand and make sure that this place knows that we serve a God who is more than able. Amen? Amen. We will stand. You got a great opportunity coming up on Thursday. I hope all you folks will come out for the march that's in Richmond on Thursday. It's a chance to stand up and let Virginia politicians as well as those in the nation to know that there are still people who stand for the sanctity and quality of life. That there are so those who still believe that this is the word of God and we're not going to take anything less. I say let the silent majority stay silent no longer. Amen. We've got to get up. We've got to get into this thing. Because Jesus is coming soon. And he's coming for those who are looking for him. In other words, who have claimed him as Lord and Savior. Who has cried out to the Lord to come into my heart. And our sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ forevermore. Is that you? It can be. It should be. But only you can make the decision for it to absolutely to be. Would you do it? Wasn't quite the way I thought we were going to go with it today. But I, you know what? I've learned that with the Lord you never know what it's going to do or where it's going to go. The message is yours today. The message is loud and clear to every child of God. But it's also loud and clear to every unbeliever. Because that's the one Jesus said he came to save. Jesus came looking for you today. You may not have came here looking for him. But his Holy Spirit is here. Father, may the conviction of the Holy Ghost fall on every one of us this morning. To hear the voice of God and to know that you are calling each of us, Lord, whether we need to make a commitment to Jesus Christ today for the first time or whether we've been saved for 50 years, that we need to make that commitment anew today and to strive to be what you have called us to be. Father, I pray your Holy Ghost will bring us all together. One mind and one accord, seeking, Father, for your word to come alive in us today. Be the Lord of our lives. Cleanse us from all iniquity. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness that we may be more like the one that we are called to be. And that's your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we ask today that you have your way. Have your way. Linda, come and help me sing another song. And as we do, I want this to be as an invitation today for each of you. The storms of life are all around us. Would everyone stand, please? Before they sing, I want you to know that we love you. And we are here for you. If you've never given your life to Christ, I'm going to ask that you come down here and take one of our prayer warriors by the hand and ask them to pray for you. If you are saved and you still have a need, Take one of these folks by the hand and ask them to pray for you. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or where you're headed. This invitation is yours this morning. He's calling you. No matter what you're facing or what you're going through today, Jesus wants you to know that I have a never-ending love. He said, I'll be with you even to the end of this age. I'll never leave you nor forsake you, no matter how hard the times may be. Come find Jesus. When your waters are so troubled, you don't think you count at all. Waves may seem like mountains when your boat is all so small. Somewhere past the clouds waits a new day to begin. Sometimes it takes a storm to calm the storm within. Sometimes.
to hear from you we struggle and we fight sometimes and we get so tired of the battle we get so drained and so fatigued and God wants to refresh us and to restore us he wants to pull us in so that we can be filled with his strength and his goodness God tells us in Exodus 14 14 that the Lord will fight for us that we need only to be still Today, if you're fighting a battle and you think you're losing, or if you're fighting a battle and you just feel so tired of it, God's got the answer for you right here. It's not anything you have to pay for. It's a free gift. It's not anything that you could ever earn or deserve. God wants to give you victory. Mm -hmm. And God wants to give you life eternal in heaven and life abundantly here in this life. 
Trust God. Let God be God in your life. Let him be Lord of your life. And choose his way over yours today. I beg you. If you don't know him as your heavenly father, you're missing out. He just wants to pull you close. He just wants a relationship with you. At seven years old, my life was so dark, I didn't want to live. I remember opening the cabinet door underneath my sink at a seven-year-old child, and I'm looking at Drano, and I'm looking at bleach, and I'm wondering, dear God, which one of these do I drink to end it all? I can't take it anymore. And God said, no. But he saved me. He gave me a new identity as a child of him. He let me know what it's like to feel loved, to be loved, to live loved. And if you're not living loved today, if you don't feel like anyone loves you, can I tell you God does? And more than anything, he wants to show you today. He just wants you to come to him so he can pull you close and so that he can do for you what no one else can do, give you life and life more abundantly. You know, the Bible tells us to look towards God as a little child, to pray as a little child. Well, this morning when I called everybody to come back here and pray in the conference room, these four children were standing there waiting to do it. And we need to pray just like these kids do every day. Their heart is more closer to God than most adults. Now, as adults need to start looking at God like a little child looks towards his parents. Thank you, children.